Okay, so this is uh, just a little view of my little overarm blade guard for the table saw that I built. Mostly to show Dave how it kind of works. Um, I took some pictures before, but that was with a previous setup, and I've changed a few little things. I don't like the springs, I've learned, um, but these are some of the basics. I'm trying to grab a 2x4 without shaking the camera, so hold on one second. So you'll see this independent sides situation works really handy by having the board just move up the small stuff the parts that it touches you see there's still stuff over here touching so it keeps kind of the blockage to a minimum works better when you're thinking in this way um, for example um, the guard works great I really like it the dust collection is amazing for it um, at the top, you'll see I've got a piece of T-Track and this tripod thing is just to span the light fixture. It doesn't really need to be that way. Um, you'll see I've also got these goofy tie rods in the ceiling, but there's also T-Track so that lets me move it this way or this back and forth to get it sort of centered over the blade here. You see I can raise the whole mechanism up. And I've got this little string that I use to keep it up. Come up with a little better thing. I don't like those springs at all. Um, the idea originally was that I was going to put weights back here, hang those uh, pieces of lead or divers' weights or something like that, so that it would be sort of in balance. I tried these springs. And Steve Bigelow gave me a great idea on using the turnbuckles to sort of dial the springs in. The problem with it is that springs are never constant, so out here they lose all sorts of grip because they're closest together. Out here they have a lot of grip, so it actually got to where they were too strong low and way too weak up high. So there was no fancy way I could think of. Weight and gravity would be more constant and it would hold it a lot better. Um, a little more evenly, would weigh it down, counterbalance it a little more evenly. So I'm going to come up with something, but you kind of see how the arms just allow the whole system to kind of work. Um, I've got a Biesmeyer splitter down here that snaps in and it fits right over that nicely. That's actually what keeps it from touching the blade right now because this is way too light. Um, so I leave it in all the time. Unless I'm making a cut that I can't use it for, then usually the guard goes as well. Um, most of the time that's a non-through cut and it doesn't matter, but... Yeah, so that's how I have this. Um, these are steel. These are aluminum arms, and this is steel. Um, it could all be done with aluminum and bolted together. It was easy to weld these little angle brackets on, but you could just as easily bolt some, some uh, gussets there too, just as easily or come up with your own mechanism. You could actually bolt straight to these angle pieces or whatever. I've made some, some stops with Delrin that I've got turned and also all of the pivot points for now, well, not for now. When I did mine, all of the pivot points, I used um, little Delrin bushings and they're kind of like washers, but there's a step that goes inside the, the hole, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes inside the hole of the plastic so that there's only Delrin to whatever other material the Delrin does, the, the, the lubrication surface, I guess. I did the same on these, but my original one I didn't. My first one was just wood with bolts with the right tension. That worked just fine, too. I went a little overboard on fancy.
And that's pretty much the blade guard situation. Thanks for watching.